second round coverage of the Wells Fargo Championship. Early morning overcast giving way to Carolina blue skies. Duck and cover. No, I... Rory McElroy plus two. That's going to be about the cut line somewhere around there. 189 is going with six iron, and I have no idea where this is going to go, and it is drifting left as well. Are you serious? What is what? How, how does Faldo know this stuff? That's what I'd like to know. With the whole left thing. It's the, the magnetic pole. Or oh, something it is. And that, yeah, we needed one of them, Rory. He needed the twirl going the other way. Do you ever see yeah. this? It's left Friday. Really? Still sitting in the gallery left. Really? Yeah, yeah. They, should, they should have fled the scene. Rory doesn't have time. Oh. Uh, and Rory, you know, hasn't butchered it yet. He's uh, He's got the chance to get this up and down. Or, or even in, just to yeah. calm the scene. Sounded a little oh bit my of goodness bump clunk. God, I've got my clubs in the car, David. Should, you know, yeah, we could go out and have a quick nine. Yeah. <laughs> <Do you need laughs> any? I could get a scorecard going and post it. <laughs> is, that, is that officially butchered now <laughs> for all three? Yeah, right. That's well, a, that's a Barnsley chop, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, you, you get yourself on the wrong side of. Uh, so they're closing in and they have the hole surrounded. Well, it's not, kind of nice to see every shot they've hit, the ball has actually gotten closer to the hole. So that's, that's, a, that's a positive, thing. isn't it? Yes. Now, Rory has the flag out. It looks like it's going to stay out. So he's thinking Holio. Really no reason for him not to pull it out. He's only got about two and a half, three feet of fringe to go with, and the putt goes uphill and should go slightly from his right to left. Get up those stairs. He's gonna go ahead and swat that in, hopefully. Oh, yes. Just toss a par at it. Interesting six, six there. You don't want to make three of those in a row. You know you're going to have a bad day. This day has gone so well so far, David. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, David, well... Number of changes to this hole. We've got that long tee here. It's going to be interesting to see if the tour officials put the markers forward to really entice the players to give it a go at the green. Rory smashing it with the driver. He got it front edge yesterday. Yeah, he did. It was uh, right up there with the long, longest drives. Well, I don't know whether he's lucky to be in the rough or a good lie in the sand, but that's a powerful hit. He's got plenty of green to work with. Not much behind the hole, but an aggressive play. And try and hit it close. You were seriously on that rant earlier today. A little more feisty. Now, after the big hit, McElroy, second shot. Simple straight ahead chip shot here, Peter, just going up the hole, just needs to just watch his distance. Ah, beautifully judged there. Now, ooh, almost made it for a deuce. Nicely done, not getting the spin coming out of the rough. He judged it very nicely. Put it in the fairway, short iron attack. But if you miss a shot, you're in trouble. Especially with driver in your hand. I mean, you've got to play. If you're going to hit a driver here, you have to place the golf ball in the fairway just because if not, you're not going to be able to control your golf ball worth or, or, I mean, at all out of this rough. That's right, and very little room to the right of the cup and beyond it. So if you, as you say, any from the fairway is important. The screen has been tweaked a little bit. It still has four or five distinctive plateau areas. And maybe players' decision on the tee varies depending on where the hole is cut. It's done very well. Now Rory has been 
pretty frustrated. Up this for a birdie. Well done, fighting back. Two under now after the opening two rounds. He was so excited too about getting off to a good start, which he hasn't normally done here at Quail Hollow. Played great, seven top tens for Phil, but has yet to break through. And is now seven shots off the lead. Yeah, great view from above. You can see how this, this golf hole turns just slowly right to left. That bunker on the corner, they're trying to thread it right through. And actually, the way Rory's looking, he's just going to cut the corner. I think he's just got no worries with that. The wind's actually starting to pick up a little bit, Nick, going oh. almost straight down. Now. He is. Look at this. He's going to hoist it right up over that left edge. Oh, my goodness. Look at oh, that. This is, this is fantastic. Oh. And even turning down the left-hand side. Taylor made tech center, telling us it's 124 miles One per hour. 124. Club That's, I mean, tour average is 113. Yeah. How about carry of 327? What? That is awesome. This is supposed to be a tough par four. <laughs> yeah, well, that helps when it just falls out of your pocket out there. In 2012, remember, it was this man who he beat. In fact, the two international mm -hmm. wins that he's had, he... McElroy's come in second. Rory's second shot now. 137 going with a gap wedge. A little bit downhill line ball. Should shoot on him ever so slightly. Go. Really? That's a 54 degree wedge. Oh, that's I think it's a 52 right. is what he carries. 52 and he still he can get that? It's what a 500 he, yard par four. What he, well, obviously he can't get it 134. He's going to get it 124. Still. But still, yeah. I mean, that is a big rip. And two back of Martin Flores. And we go back to nine. Rory for birdie. Flat putt here is moving slightly from his left to right. Good try, but uh, what a mixed bag. Knows what he's got to do on the uh, second nine. You can't come into a tournament feeling good, and, and then you miss the cut by one. Right on the cut line right now. You get Orleans hung out. <laughs> Stuck around. Miles from the South Carolina border. So they'll make the turn, head to the 10th. McElroy blixed and fouled. Welcome back to the 10th hole here at Quail Hollow. Second round of the Wells Fargo Championship. Rory McElroy, who's got such power off the tee. Well, that ball stayed in the air a long way, but it looked like it dived straight into the bunker. Still five under. Really? Yeah. Consecutive Eagles. Well, there's only been one Eagle here today. And uh, that was Kevin Streelman who chipped in. Johnny Vegas, the only player to reach this green in two. Rory McElroy's third shot. 163 yards going to the eight iron, David. This one's got to get up into the... I, 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 well, not a bad not, shot, not, but... Not too bad. Yeah, I'd like that to have been in the putt. He's not sure where it is, I believe. It's okay. He's all right. Good chance of just bunting that one in, perhaps. Get things going. The 10th, uh, almost 600 yards. Unique atmosphere playing with Rory and Ricky as we learn in this week's FedEx Cup face-off. They get to East Lake in the Tour Championship, out to 10. Rory. Oh, 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 oh. Never quite got enough of it, Rich. Interesting play there, David. I actually thought he was going to belly that wedge, and he elected to go ahead and go up with it. Proving to be, uh, well, not as, not as productive as they should be for this group. Yeah, with their length out here, David, you'd think that they would just have... Remixes five. 
So a strange looking front nine scorecard there for Rory McIlroy. But not so strange for Martin Flores. 67 yesterday, 68 today, he leads by one. For day here in Piedmont region of North Carolina as we take you out to the 11th. The dog leg right to left. McIlroy giving it a rip with a three metal. Nice call, right? We'll be thinking of carrying that bunker on the corner with the three metal, and he does. Maybe 10, 15 yards left of where he was aiming, but he's in great position now. Well, this one lucky just catching the fairway. And he's got a beautiful angle, 119 to go, probably just nothing more than a 52 degree wedge. Should be an easy putt. We'll go back and have a closer look at the. Well, we'll go back to 11. And an important putt. Just to be in a good attitude for the closing stretch. Make the birdie and stride to the next hole. Sixty percent from this distance, but I think if you're going uphill, maybe it's a higher percentage. Hit it firmly. He didn't. Let's try to coax it up there. Disappointing miss. Trying to fight back after the forty. Empowering the par five tenths, and then after that second shot, there very disappointing past champion where he was at seven under par as we go to 12. McElroy well, one of the most narrow tee shots on the golf course and I think holding the pose means watching it closely it looks like he's gonna, gonna get away we got a nice little nudge and it peeled into the fairway that's look how narrow that I think there's 22 that's paces crazy. wide that, I, I that don't know fairway. how you, you hit that fairway but Strong forward press. Which is okay even moving mm. forward. McElroy. Can he get on that back plateau and just about. The ups and downs of his career here. Now McElroy, who's had his putting woes today. Well, yeah, missed a couple of four footers, and the one at the last was a misread because that. And that one's now miss, you know, poor pace. So uh, that's what you've got to get everything right. There's so many, there's about five odd elements to putting. You've got to read it right. You've got to build a line up right. You've got to make a decent stroke. You've got to hit it out the middle of the putter face. That's another important one. You've got to have decent tempo to your stroke. Anything else we can you think of? You make me not want to do <laughs> yeah, it. Exactly. It's hard work. All in a four footer. And back in 2011, after he had that terrible experience at the Masters, he first sought the advice of Dave Stockton during this week, this event, and it's certainly worked out for him. Oh, back on the tee. Rory has it teed up. Tees in the same place here. The green 15 yards left of where it was last year. There's a new bridge. Yep. Constructed old stonework, very nicely done, and the green cleared out behind. There used to be a set of steps up to the 14th. Now it's just a, a beautiful grassy bank. And one of the one of the things that these changes have made it made it much more accessible for spectators. You can see them behind the green here. The same here at the 16th. It's a beautiful viewing area to high and to the right. Thing very smartly done. He doesn't hate that one. And why would you? Pretty much right at the flagstick, but a slippery one for Rory McElroy, who's not having the best day. But Keeping that mindset made me convince yourself over the weekend now that you're leading the tournament. We're going to win for the first time. 13. Down the hill, right to left for Rory. Ooh. Oh, you're kidding. 
That looked superb all the way. Yeah. An eight iron was like 140 yards. Rory McIlroy's been waiting here on 14 for a while. <laughs> 350 yards on the card. 45 actually playing 320 today 310 to the front a little bit downhill because if he's going to rip it with a three metal he wants to hit a really solid one and get a good first bounce and he's thinking of putting us on the green if he was playing safe i think he'd been hitting an iron out to the right i don't think any 25 year old ought to play safe i think they should all go for it Hasn't reached the green, but he's going to be in great shape. A little firmer first bounce. <laughs> Could have been back to the 14th and the eagle chip. For a quick move to one under par. He's disappointed it's not a tap in, disappointed he didn't chip it in, but five coming up. But then the green mile, so tough. And that one, no problem at all. For Rory. Let's see him hit the fair win. Number 15 hit the second shot he did when he won here. Fantastic iron shot. And check the leaderboard. We've had Flores and Rose at the top of the leaderboard for a long, long time. It's been a beautiful day here in Charlotte. Uh, so a little green to work with. We'll go to 15, the other par five. McElroy. Well, when he won here, he eagled the 15th on the Friday to get him inside the cut line. So I'll make a prediction. If he eagles this now, he will win. Otherwise, oh, oh he will win. <laughs> yeah. Last one, 32 yards. He got four iron. In ah, well, it's not a five iron. No, you can throw this straight up in the air and stop <laughs> it in plenty of time. So last time he did this was the famous five iron shot. There we go. Look at this. Mm. That's what we talked about. Couldn't get Augusta right uh, on the pipes, par fives at all this year. And, so this is the moment to change his whole week. Only seen a couple of eagles here at 15. Just watch the right knee. It's all about the right knee, his swing. And there's the famous pose. Oh, a bit of a rum do. That lands one yard on. It would at least 20 foot closer. Still holding his finish. <laughs> Not going to change anything. Can do a full 360 around him. Oh, very up. There's a nice view of the 16th, the new 16th, uh, the round hospitality area. There is. It's uh, the Green Mile Club, and which is what the final stretch is called here at Quail Hollow. And just in front of the Green Mile Club is where the green used to be. It's now the 17th tee, which is higher than it used to be. The 17th can play close to 250 yards. But you can see 16, 17 in the Green Mile Club. And no one has to die. What a place. What a sparkling afternoon here. It's just been a glorious day. And it's going to work very well for that PGA Championship, isn't it? Look at that finish. Mm -hmm. that you guys taking a look at the Green Mile Club and the layout here. It's a it's a tight knit group. Here, Usti is a uh, a member here at Quail Hollow, Webb Simpson. But Johnny Harris, who is the club president, certainly very active in everything going on here. And is his dad, who started the club back in the late 50s, and the golf course was built. 1961 PGA Tour coming here for many years. All right, here it is, that moment this for you, Nick. Well, it's going to be a double breaker. He's going to hit it into the ridge in the middle of the green there, and so that means it will go right to left and then may go back. Oh, it clouded it. It may go back the other way. Oh, yeah, there she goes. He... That's all right, good length. Not 
running. <laughs> Am I pointing in the right direction now? <laughs> well, that's a holly bush. <laughs> a little right. prickly. Up All on right. the green now, McElroy for birdie while oh, that's going no. on. Oh, no. What was that? He's looking for a hook, and it goes right. Sixteenth tee, 508 yards of par four. I'll tell you, David, with as far as he's hit this driver today, would surprise me to have a wedge in his hand. All the Taylor May Tech Center is telling us 121 mile an hour club head speed. And ball going at 180, and he carried it. Going to run out Whoa. of hole. Easy there, Unbelievable. Rover. Unbelievable. That's 380 or something down there. 322 yards of a carry, and well, that's, that's no more than a yeah. sand wedge in. With a yacht. This week, uh, the 16th hole, 17th and 18th have been third, second, and first most difficult. So, something to look forward to as you play. Not real difficult when you have a driver and wedge in your hand. And 29 yards. 70 yards ahead of Jonas Blixt. Oh, right at the flag stick. Stay one over. Now, live look at Rory. The same as Rory needs to chip one in. And. Yeah, ball's moving around a little bit on the greens. They're getting firm and dry. And a little bit of bit of traffic on them. Late, uh, well, here we are, late Friday afternoon. A large gallery, great perspective there. Right now. Nice chip shot. It wandered past that flag. David. Oh, oh. Yeah. I get that funny feeling. 375 yard tee shot. And a five. Sitting there with the new 16th green, 17th tee, pretty much where the old 16th green used to be. Amazing how it just looks like it's been there forever. Beautiful, great condition. No important putt for Rory. This is not. Trying to cut this one back up into the wind. That's a little strange. Well, he's going to find the green, but he's going to have a tough putt. Two putts to stay at one over. Battle for the cut line down. <laughs> it's a tough finishing stretch. Did it. What's this putt like? Uh, for Rory. Well, <laughs> it's pretty slippery. Not a lot of break in it, but it's just getting the speed right seems to be the biggest challenge. A little bit left to right. Oh. He probably learned something from the chip shot. The Blix chip shot gave him the. Let's go to the 18th tee. And needing a par here. <laughs> well, kept it interesting to the end. Well, sure this is going to test the power fade. Went with a nice fade at uh, with that four iron on 17. So unless he's just going to launch a draw off that bunker, this is going to be fun. Probably looks a lot smaller with his shadows overhanging, so it doesn't make the tee shot any easier. Gallery, love it. He just pounded oh. it. Sure, sure did. Just yep. aim and fire. Keeps it in the fairway, too. 72 players at plus one or better. That's what Fowler and McElroy are right now playing the final hole.
it's, Nick, what do you think about it? Well, I, 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 let's just watch this shot by Rory. This is pretty important. 147, that's a pitching wedge, Nick. Oh, got to be good, got to be at it. Yeah, good spot, spin sideways, that's a good one. You know, with Martin Karma, it's like, they, they call it, uh, the psychologists, some call it like the, the, the layers of an onion. You know, it's in there, but we just cloud, or we build so much on top of ourselves and minds of doubt and questions, and do I do this, and how do I do that, get me? And the psychologist will come in and teach you how to just take... Need to be ready for the beautiful 18s. Here's the setting at 18, and McElroy and Fowler needing a par, you would think, to make the cut. 73 players at plus one or better, and Jonas Blix needing a birdie. He's at two over right now. Back to Keimer for one moment, though, a thought. Mm. It's amazing how one event, namely the Masters there, can make you change your game or your swing, your desire yeah. to win that. Well, yeah, and you where well, you're basically saying to yourself, I don't have the game to compete there, and right. you obviously want to have that ability to to compete there, um, and you go off for searching, and the, the hardest thing is, you know. Remember the magic that Rory McIlroy has seen on this green? 2010, he had yet to win on the PGA Tour, coming down to this on that charge the final day. Yeah, one of my great calls. I thought, just lag it up there. <laughs> he had other ideas, I've learned now, just to say, <laughs> what is he thinking? <laughs> 62, which was matched today by Brendan de Jong on this golf course, although you know, a bit more dramatic for Rory to win it. Well, Roy's got a good chance to just brush this in, and that will that will help. And he'll scratch his head and wonder why those tee shots are going left. And a bit of misjudgment on some second shots as well. But no. So the agony continues. Yeah, right, right to the last putt. He made the cut on the number when he won here. He also made the cut right on the number at the Masters this year after a mm. 77. Ended up final round in the 60. Anyway, Rory, uh, I guess we're going to give him that one. Did it quickly, didn't he? So he's going to... Bit of daylight. Maybe these boys will head to the range and just try and solve the few problems.